Hello and welcome to the second part of my building tutorial. If the first chapter was dealing with something that is always good to do even for the experienced builder, planning your build, this chapter is rather about stuff that is good to know in general and to keep in mind when constructing any hover. You want to keep your balance even if you lost the rear of your robot or when losing a heavy function part like the ion distorter on one side. When flying through heavy flak damage and even maintaining control and surviving driving through the enemy base while there are plenty of enemies there to get some good video footage for a building tutorial you are planning to make. I had originally planned to talk about both hover blades and thrusters in this chapter but there was so much regarding the hover blades to cover that thruster placement, however important, will have to wait until chapter 3. So in this chapter I will simply talk about hover blades and how to place them for a stable hover. But I think a good place to start is with which size of hover blades you should choose. Let's compare the smallest and the biggest hover blades. They both got the same HP to CPU ratio and the same caramas to CPU ratio. They also got the same center of mass assist. The center of mass, if this thing I built here represent the hover, would be between the black and the red blocks. What center of mass assist does is artificially shift that line so that the center of mass is calculated lower than that it actually is. What this means in practicality for us is that we can actually pile quite a light, lot of weight on top without tipping over or be top heavy. Terra mass in comparison to how much space they require is however a different story. In an area of 7 times 6 cubes, you can fit 4 hover blade tornado. In the same area, you have space enough for 9 hover blade squall. The lift of the big ones will be 2,808 kilos, and that of the small ones, 4,626 kilos. The smallest ones are therefore roughly 60% more space efficient. You can also fit armor more efficiently around the smaller hover blades. It's just one single space that is not possible to cover. The big ones got at least three spaces in the middle that are impossible to cover, and two more that are really hard, but it's possible to work around. It's actually possible to place curved inners on the sides of the big hover blade, although you might have to try a couple of times getting the cube placement error before you succeed. Another advantage of the smaller hover blades is that you can also squeeze them into places where not much else fits. Like here is one practically occupying the same space as the power module and one placed overlapping. The last advantage is that because they are smaller and have less lift per blade, you will need more of them. This means that it will be easier to have an even spread of lift of the robot and each blade lost will have less of an impact on the robot's behavior and balance. So, in conclusion, small hovers are better than big ones. It used to be quite important to put the hover blades above the central mass, but with the central mass assist for all sizes of hover blades that have become less vital, there is of course a limit to what it can handle before the bot is top heavy, but it can handle quite a lot. So with the current center of mass assist, it's quite easy to keep the bot balanced unless you place something really, really heavy on top, like an iron distorter. I often find myself only having one layer of cubes below my hover blades, but using a bit heavier cubes below than above. As long as you tip back quite fast if you roll over, you will be alright. Next thing to talk about before getting around to actual hover blade placement is the balance of your robot. Of course you want it to be balanced over the center and not tilting sideways in any direction, but you also have to think about back and forward balance. An easy way to test longitudinal plane balance of the robot is by ascending and descending in test mode. If the rear is the last to lift and the first to go down, the robot is back heavy. If both ends lift at the same time going up and down, the bot is balanced. And finally, if the front end is the first to go down and up, the bot is front heavy. Having a front heavy bot is good, especially using lasers, because it will get a better gun clearance. This is very pronounced going downhill. This is a back heavy bot going downhill, and we can see how it struggles hitting anything on the ground close in front of it. This is a front heavy bot, and we can see that a lot more shots are hitting closer to the robot on the ground, even as we pick up speed. So, in conclusion. Keep your bot balanced over the center, 
but a bit front heavy for a better gun clearance. The trick of good hover blade placement is simply try to place them in a way so that the bot will keep this balance for as long as possible while taking damage. Here for example it makes a lot more sense to have the hover blade connected towards the front than towards the back. If you lost all the armor and guns in the front you will have lost a lot of weight. If the hover blade survives you will find yourself very very back heavy. For roughly every 500 kilo of weight lost you want to lose the hover blade carrying that weight as well. This means that if we lose a side mounted iron distorter that weights 2250 kilo, we want to make sure that we lose quite a lot of hover blades as well. An easy way to achieve this is to mount the hover blades on cubes that are only connected to the iron distorter itself and not to any other part of the hover. The same goes for other heavy function parts. The power module, for example, got a weight of about 200 kilo. Before you lose it, you will most probably have lost quite some armor and weight protecting it, so it can be a good idea to mount a hover directly on the model, unless the model sits almost in the center of the robot, as it in that case won't affect the weight distribution. You also want to make sure that the connection tubes of the hover blades are not touching the roof of the hover, for the simple reason that you do not want to lose all your hovers when you get hit by plasma from above. In this example, a plasma hit would spread along the roof and down to the connection of the hover marked in red, while the green one will survive as it is not connected to the cubes on top. There is no optimal placement for hover blades, as it will be different for each design where the hovers need to sit. The best advice I can give is to spread them according to weight distribution, and check what will happen when the bot takes different type of damage. If the bot will become unbalanced due to heavy damage in an area, you might want to be sure you will lose some lift at the same time to stay balanced. In the next part I will finally get around to talk about those thrusters, the use of a rudder and also about why constructing with light cubes are almost always to prefer over constructing with heavy cubes. Feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the next chapter.